Good morning. Welcome to the Greater Richmond Church of Christ Sunday service, virtually. We're so excited uh, that you're tuning in with us this morning to worship God. My name is Brandon Vasalo, and this is my wife, Megan Vasalo, and we are the Vasalos, and we help lead the campus ministry. During this time of the COVID crisis, we are still aiming to be an Acts 242 church. Simply put, that just means that we're devoted to God. We're devoted to each other, to prayer, and to reading His Word. And our theme as a church is worship the King. Uh, we're striving as a church to worship God in everything that we do. Not just here on a Sunday, but every day of our lives. And how important that is for us, especially during this time of uncertainty and fear, uh, to put God first and in every single day. Uh, so like I said, we're so excited you're joining in this morning. Uh, we hope if, you know, if it's your first time here, please leave a comment uh, and say first time and let us know you're with us this morning. Uh, for any more information, uh, click the link for more church information. Welcome to the Greater Richmond Church of Christ. Good morning. It's great to uh, have you all worshiping with us uh, virtually this morning. I do have a, a brief announcement. Uh, and it's uh, Gabe Santos, our, our very own teacher here in the Greater Richmond Church of Christ, is actually doing a segment of videos on our YouTube channel. And it's called um, Deeper Roots. But uh, really what he wants you to do is ask him anything you want about the Bible. Any questions you have about the Bible, uh, he will uh, study them out, probably already knows. <laughs> And uh, we'll actually uh, do a YouTube video uh, to answer your question. And so uh, that's great to be able to have uh, someone of his caliber uh, to be able to do that. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, submit those to uh, drgabesantos at gmail.com. Uh, that's drgabesantos uh, at gmail.com. And uh, this morning, we're actually going to look at the Beatitudes. So if you can be turning over to Matthew chapter 5, uh, we'll be looking at those this morning. And uh, the whole purpose of looking at the Beatitudes is that uh, if you're visiting with us, our theme for the year is worship the king. Uh, Jesus being that king, he's obviously a real king, uh, has a real kingdom, although it's not a physical kingdom. Uh, it is a kingdom of our hearts. And the Beatitudes really are... Uh, what I like to call kingdom attitudes. They are Christian qualities. Uh, they really describe who we are in Christ and not so much what we do. And I like to look at them that look at these beatitudes as actually, uh, you know, spiritual truths uh, that we get to look at uh, and really identifying who we are if we are really citizens of uh, Christ's kingdom. And so, we're just going to read two this morning. And so let's turn over uh, to Matthew chapter five. Uh, Matthew chapter five. And, you know, today my purpose is really to remind us of the mindset we are to have as disciples of Jesus, as citizens of, of Christ's kingdom, uh, what our mindset should be. Uh, my hope also is to remind us of these great blessings that we have uh, in God especially during this, these turbulent times that we're going through. I also hope, and hope to awaken some of those who have not yet made Jesus their king, that this will spark interest and, uh, and move our hearts to want to do just that. So let's uh, read just uh, chapter 1, sorry, chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, uh, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward, reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So the first two Beatitudes we'll look at today. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are those who mourn. And uh, each of the Beatitudes uh, are introduced with blessed. Beatitude is actually a Latin word uh, that means blessed, uh, often referenced to being happy. Uh, I think probably more of uh, a proper definition is a, define, a divine favor uh, that has been bestowed on man, okay? Uh, particularly men that are in his kingdom. Uh, it's not about a feeling of happiness, uh, but again, it's more about how God feels about us. Uh, some theologian says uh, that this blessedness means to be congratulated. Uh, that's uh, uh, something to, to consider, you know, to be congratulated by God, right? Uh, each one of these Beatitudes is a description of character followed by an explanation of what makes them blessed. A description of character described by, uh, uh, followed by an explanation of why they're being blessed. The first one is simply, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, what a great question. You know, how is one who is poor in spirit uh, blessed <laughs> with the kingdom of heaven? How does that how does that work? How about the rich in spirit? What do they get? Uh, you know, uh, you know, this poor in spirit in the Greek, it's an idiom that actually means one who is humble with regards to his own capacities. It really has this idea of being humble before God, to recognize one's need for God. You know, this truly is a blessing to do so, uh, to see our need for God. Imagine when we see our need for God or need for anything or anyone, it actually opens us up to the ability to listen, to learn, <laughs> uh, to sit in a posture of teach me. It also... Uh, it really is the beginning of building a, a true relationship with God is understanding and seeing our need for him. Uh, you know, it's a blessing to see our need for God because it helps us to see more of God and his works and less of us in what we think we're doing. <laughs> OK, uh, it opens it, it, it opens us up to see his power to see his protection, to see his gracious hand upon us. Man, these are gifts uh, when we, uh, these are blessings when we realize that uh, we need God uh, in our lives. And so the question that, you know, I've, I've been forced to ask myself is, am I poor in spirit? Do I recognize my need for God? I think often uh, I see my need for God when I need something, <laughs> uh, when I can't do something anymore on my own, uh, then uh, we can go to God, don't we? Uh, unfortunately, God is often our last resort. You know, I, I find myself going to God at the times when I'm stressed, uh, I'm overwhelmed, uh, I'm fearful. You know, those are the times... Man, I'm running to God quickly. Uh, but to my shame, sometimes I'm not running to God first. And when we live like this, uh, you know, it reminds me of what I was like in college. Uh, you know, I, I never called my parents unless I needed something. OK, when I needed a little money, uh, man, I called them up, you know, real quickly. You know, if I, I needed to get home. Uh, you know, for vacation or holiday, man, I was on the phone real quick. And uh, unfortunately, I think that's what we're like with God sometimes. We only go to him when he provides a service or need for us. It's almost like our, we have people in our lives, if it be mechanics, doctors, 
uh, you know, Grubhub deliverers <laughs> or drivers. Uh, we have no interest in them until they provide a service for us, until we need that service. And unfortunately, we can treat God in the exact same way. We don't see our need for him. We think, I got this. I'm taking care of this. I'm okay. Uh, we need God like we need air to breathe. Uh, better than that, I think we need God like we need clothes to wear. Okay? Uh, you know, uh, imagine uh, us getting up every morning. You know, sometimes we may forget to put on makeup or forget to comb our hair, or, you know, I've even left the house at times uh, forgetting to brush my teeth. But I will never forget to put on clothes before leaving the house, <laughs> okay? Uh, I, I think uh, that, I think, is a great picture of how much we need God. We need God uh, like we need clothes to wear uh, as we leave uh, the house. You know, really my one point today is that we need to be beggars uh, as well as we need to be crybabies, okay? Uh, beggars and crybabies. I think that really identifies these two uh, beatitudes. Uh, beggars, like we just talked about, uh, seeing our need for God uh, at all times. Uh, crybabies, like it talks about here, blessed are those who mourn, for they uh, shall be comforted. This is really the second description of, uh, uh, of character in this beatitude. It's, it's one who mourns. Uh, blessed is the one who does that uh, because they will be comforted. Uh, you know, comfort is something we all desire, isn't it? What a great blessing. Uh, that is really the blessing. It's that we're comforted. Uh, I think when uh, often when we think of comfort, I think we think of Netflix binging, we think of, you know, a nice bottle of wine uh, with the one that we love. Uh, we think of, uh, you know, uh, net, uh, I said Netflix, it, we think of uh, a hammock, uh, you know, with uh, ours and our loved one in there just swinging, uh, relaxing, and no worries, no stress, uh, no work to be done. And uh, as comfortable as that may be, I don't think that's the, the comfort that Christ is talking about here. Imagine a kind of comfort where you're always at peace, always calm, consoled, anxious, free, no matter what the circumstances. You know, we've got a whole lot of challenges that we're faced with even now, that even in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of being quarantined and and locked up in the midst of, you know, trying to do everything virtually, there can still be a sense of peace uh, that we have, that we're not stressed about things. Uh, I know I felt stressed going shopping. Uh, every time I go shopping, you know, there's, I see more masks, I see <laughs> more gloves, and I'm like, I got none of that right now. And uh, I got my little, <laughs> One little Lysol wipe, you know, that I'm, uh, you know, wiping on everything that I touch. And uh, it's times like this that we can feel anxious. We can feel worried, but we can even be comforted at this time. This is the blessing that Christ promises us. Uh, as our future is kind of shaky of uh, even our, our, our high school students, some who have graduated this year and uh, school's finished. And man, how does that work? And uh, you know, the worries and concerns that they may even have during these times, you know, obviously with the crap, the, the stock market, you know, seems to, to, to constantly be be falling, you know, the challenges that that has on our our finances. Uh, but we can still be at peace. We can still be comforted even at times like this. People who are blessed in such a way. Uh, the text says that they mourn. Uh, and, you know, what is that about mourning? Uh, the, the mourning are blessed. Uh, and I, you know, I, it made me ask the question, well, what do I mourn over? What do I cry over? Uh, you know, and often it's movies. Uh, it's, uh, you know, great sporting events, the Olympics, where you see someone who's, 
you know, won the gold and, and uh, watched them kind of go through this little uh, journey, uh, you know, man, those things uh, move me and sometimes to tears. Uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, for some of us, it may be commercials, you know, UNICEF or, you know, adopt a, a dog. <laughs> uh, you know, all of these things can kind of move us to, to tears and uh, and we can kind of cry over some uh, and be bothered by some of the most insignificant things. Uh, we also cry over losses, right? Uh, you know, death. Uh, if that be a loved one or a, a friend, uh, you know, these, uh, this type of crying is something uh, that happens in our lives as well. Um, and John Stott says this in his, his book on the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. He says, it is not sorrow of bereavement to which Christ refers, but the sorrow of repentance. And so here, you know, uh, John Stott is really saying that, man, that uh, the type of sorrow that uh, and mourning that Jesus is talking about here is not of our, you know, personal losses, uh, but it's actually supposed to be over the sin of the world and what sin does, the death that it, it brings, the destruction that it brings. Uh, it's not the loss of people uh, that we should be mourning, but it's the the loss of our innocence. It's the loss of our righteousness. Uh, in, some, in some instances, the loss of our self-respect. This is what we should be mourning over in our own lives. Imagine how better our world would be if we mourned over the sinful things that we do. You know, as, a, as a society, as a culture, as a community, if we mourned over sin, if it bothered us, if it, it just uh, ate away at us, not just the, want, the sin that we see, but the sin even in our own life. Imagine if we mourned over hatred, racism. How different would our world be? How about unity in our government system man if we if we were bothered and 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 wept over the disunity that we see in our in our politicians and how they treat each other and how they talk to each other and how they backstab each other oh my goodness how different would our world be uh if we wept over greed unforgiveness pride uh, man, our world would be like heaven <laughs> if we were really concerned about it in that way. And, and this is what Jesus is talking about, that we weep, that we cry, that we're bothered, that our hearts are, are broken uh, by the sin in the world uh, to, the fact, to the point where we want to do something about it. Uh, that we want to even change the, the sin in our own lives. Uh, it's funny, it's, it's very easy to look at the sin of others and be indignant about other people's sin, uh, but how about the sins that are in our own hearts? You know, I'm challenged uh, to love. I'm challenged to forgive. I, I, I feel that, you know, uh, and I really want to grow in that area uh, in my own life, that I'm uh, you know, opening up my arms to uh, uh, to help and to encourage as many people as I possibly can. You know, uh, Jesus is a great example of this in uh, Luke chapter 19. Uh, and it's this time where he is, it's the triumphal entry. It's the time where he comes into Jerusalem. Uh, he's riding a donkey. Uh, people are throwing palm leaves on the ground, throwing their cloaks on the ground because he is the king that they've been waiting for. Uh, and they think he's going to be the one that's going to usher them into this great kingdom, uh, remove the oppression of the, the, the Roman government and, and all of the, the negativity that they have brought. 
Uh, they think that he's this king over this physical kingdom. Uh, and, and this is what he says uh, in Luke chapter 19. Let me get over there. As he comes into the city, uh, it says in verse 41, it says, And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. And so here Jesus goes, comes into Jerusalem. Uh, it is on Palm Sunday, you know, this very day. Uh, he comes in and he sees the people of Jerusalem and he's weeping uh, because he realizes they don't get it. <laughs> they don't understand. Uh, uh, they are missing the point. In just five days, uh, these people will be uh, uh, crucifying Jesus. Here they're saying, hey, you're our king, you're our king. Uh, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna. In five days, they'll be nailing him to the cross. Uh, Jesus recognizes that they are blind, uh, that, they, that they don't see uh, their need for him. Uh, they miss the mark. Uh, and sometimes we can be like that, can't we? I think it really is our, maybe our greatest sin is our self-sufficiency, that we think, I can do this on my own. I'm good. I'm covered. All is well until something like corona happens, <laughs> the coronavirus. Uh, and then we all begin to wake up and see a greater need for God. Let's turn over to the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 5. The Hebrew writer says it well here. As we've looked at these two Beatitudes, uh, being beggars and being crybabies, uh, he says this about Jesus in chapter 5, in verse 7. It says, In those days, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. You know, Jesus did what is so hard for us to do. <laughs> uh, he seeks help from God. Uh, the text says that he's crying out, uh, you know, offering up prayers and supplications uh, to the one who could save him from death. Man, that he saw his need for his father. Uh, not self-reliant, but God-reliant. He also mourned. <laughs> it says that he offered up supplications. You know, it, it really is, uh, you know, begging uh, uh, to God uh, and, uh, you know, bringing these prayers up to him and you know, these obviously weren't prayers as we see him on the cross. They are not prayers for himself, but they're prayers for us. He's mourning over our sin. Uh, he's praying and even he prayed on the cross, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Uh, you know, Jesus showed us the great example of these kingdom attitudes. You know, the two that we looked at today, being a beggar and being a crybaby. <laughs> Uh, that he was poor in spirit and cried out, and uh, uh, and he mourned for us. You know, this, I hope, will move us this morning for us to want to imitate him, for us to want to adopt these kingdom attitudes. It is what it means to be uh, a subject uh, to the great king of Jesus it's being poor in spirit, uh, and it is being those who mourn. Man, what a blessing when we live our lives that way. 
And that is what we're really called to be. You know, as we look at, uh, as we take communion this morning, let us focus and remember of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, uh, that he cried out for us, uh, that he prayed and mourned for our sins. Let us also realize that he didn't rely on himself. He saw his need for God and went to God so that he could actually die for us. Let us embrace that. Let us live that way uh, as well as being uh, beggars and crybabies. Let's embrace these kingdom attitudes. Let's live like that in Richmond and that we can have the blessings of peace, uh, that we can have the blessings of comfort, uh, the blessings of being in his kingdom. Let's bow our heads and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for this time that we can uh, be able to uh, worship you together. Uh, we are so grateful uh, for the great example that you've set, that uh, these uh, kingdom attitudes, uh, Father, you are truly, uh, your son has truly lived this way for us and set such a great example. Uh, Father, may we uh, uh, really uh, tap into that and uh, acknowledge uh, just how much he relied on you and turned to you. May we acknowledge uh, how much he's wept uh, over us. Uh, and may that move and inspire us uh, to live our lives different. God, I pray that uh, for anyone who's just visiting uh, today, that they'll uh, uh, seek us out in a greater way in order to uh, learn uh, how to really be a part of your kingdom as well. God, we do love you. We thank you so much for this time. Uh, we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Saved us. Precious blood has bathed us. Now your message takes us. Oh, sing it all around the world. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. People there rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting. See? 